Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And I'm Mike Heffernan. Dr. Heffernan is a cardiologist who is kindly gracing us with his presence. He's going to answer some of your viewers' questions. And today, we're going to talk about irregular heartbeats. Right. Palpitations. Yes, palpitations. Mm -hmm. Not broken hearts, Paul, as no, we went over on one of the other yeah. videos. Not going there again. Yeah, <laughs> too painful. So what, what's a palpitation or what's an irregular heartbeat? What, what do people come to see you about? Yeah, so, so it's really common. Okay. Um, and you know, we get it in teenagers, okay. um, teenagers all the way up to the elderly. And so generally people will describe a couple of things. So they'll describe an irregularity where they feel like their heart going bump, 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 bump. So a little bit of irregularity like that. Some people will describe a sensation where it, it's not so irregular, but it's quick and fast. Just a do, 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 do. Um, and so, of course, we're hearing that story, and it's like, well, it's really hard to know sure. uh, unless we do a couple of tests just to kind of figure out and, and what's going on. And so the first thing is, well, how often does it happen? And they say, oh, you know, probably at least once a day or a couple times a day. It's like, perfect. Uh, we can capture that. And so we've got monitors that uh, we can put on patients. They're called Holter monitors. And there are a couple of stickies uh, with some wires or sometimes just a little simple band up here. Yep. And patients can wear these monitors for 24 hours up to two weeks at a time. Okay. And they keep a little diary and they write, oh, you know what, 7.45 a.m., I had my palpitations. And then we can look and go, oh, this is what it was. Okay. And, and, and tell them exactly what it was. And, you know, palpitations can range from something incredibly benign, like extra beats from the upper chamber of the heart or maybe extra beats from the lower chamber of the heart. Yep. Um, things like stress and caffeine and sleeplessness, uh, new dogs, new babies, sure. all those things can kind of provoke it. Anything kind of jacks up adrenaline system. But then there are some other rhythm disturbances that are worrisome for us, okay. um, ones that put patients at risk. Um, there are rhythms called atrial fibrillation. Uh, so atrial fibrillation uh, tends to occur more often in people who are older, uh, but that increases a patient's risk for stroke. And so we really want to know if they're getting that. So that would be like an irregular heart rate all the time as opposed no, to just... No, it can come and go. Come and go, yeah. intermittent yeah. atrial fibrillation. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So it would be like a run of irregular heart rates for a few minutes or... And, or seconds? hours even. Okay. Yeah. As opposed to those just a couple of extra beats here For a few seconds. The okay. extra beats for a few seconds tend to be just those benign ones. And then, okay. so would you say that a Holter monitor is kind of like an EKG? Because a lot of you are like, well, what's an EKG? What's a Holter monitor? And what's yeah. the difference between EKG and ECG? It depends uh, on the country you're in. You uh, yeah. So electrocardiogram and electrocardiogram. Sure. Yeah. So okay. uh, K is a cardiogram with a, uh, with a, with with a, a K. Kick. And with a kick. Uh, with a kick. Yeah. 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 So ECG, EKG, they're synonymous. Yes. Um, so what is that? So, you know, we, we have you lie flat on a table. Yep. We put some stickies uh, on your chest. And really, it's just taking an electrical picture of your heart. Got it's, it. It's a camera shot of what the electricity is happening for five seconds. Right. And then we have an idea. It's something that you know, was invented over 100 years ago. Amazing. Boom. And it's Here's one here moves. showing EKG, ECG. Okay. okay. see a little line, squiggly line. That just a lot of squiggly lines. Just represents the electrical signal that's happening in your heart. Right. So the first squiggly line lets us know what's happening in the upper chamber called the atrium. Yep. And then the bigger kind of complex below is telling us what's happening in the ventricle down below. Okay. Um, it tells us lots of stuff. You know, have you had a heart attack before? So we can tell old stuff, right? Yeah. Not necessarily in the moment stuff. Yeah. Yes. Have you had an old heart attack? Right. Uh, are you having a heart attack now? Uh, what rhythm are you in? How, is your heart rate too slow? Is your heart rate too fast? Right. Uh, we get a lot of information from a hundred year old test. It is but, yeah. And basically the electro electrical activity in the heart is what drives the muscle, which is the pump, which is what drives the blood around your circulatory system. So the, the electrical signal that they're looking at is looking at the driving signal that drives the muscle, yeah, basically. exactly. And so when you have this regular heart rate and you have the Holter monitor and you see some, are, are most people getting treat, treatment for this or is this something that usually is not necessarily treated? Yeah, a lot of the time it, it's, you know, reassurance is the treatment. Sure. It says, hey, you know what, this is okay. This is never gonna, never it's hurt not dangerous. you, not dangerous. Um, and then it's like, well, let's, let's talk about what might be causing this. What's going on in your life right now? Anything changed, any new medications? Okay. Uh, anything going on that's, you know, any new stress in your life? Um, yeah. Okay, and some rhythms, irregular rhythms, do need treatment. Like Absolutely. atrial fibrillation, yep. you're mentioning, uh, that puts you at risk for... For stroke. For stroke and yep. blood clots and things like that. So you're on some form of blood thinner usually. Right. With uh, atrial fibrillation. Um, and then what about more uh, sort of deeper rhythm problems that might need, uh, you know, more intervention? 
Yeah, so there are other, you know, life-threatening rhythm disturbances like ventricular tachycardia, for yeah. instance, and so that's when the lower chamber of the ventricle just goes crazy and, and starts firing away. And the reason why that's a problem is that it can degenerate into ventricular fibrillation. I think people right. have all seen that, you know, if they watched enough TV and the clear shock, yeah. you know, and, and so those are rhythms that are particularly concerning. And the main reason that's concerning people is because when your heart squeezes like this, but if the rate gets fast enough, it essentially just doesn't move any blood anymore, it right? This is the issue. It's all about getting blood out of the heart to the rest of your body. Yeah, and and, and, you and can, to the heart itself. And you can pass away from that kind of rhythm disturbance. Right. And so to answer your question, for people who have that, uh, we have a variety of treatments. But one one thing that we do most often do is uh, put a defibrillator in, which is a very fancy kind of pacemaker that goes into the you know about the size of about the size of a toonie here yeah. in Canada, a little thicker, goes under your skin and it locks and it watches all your heartbeats. Amazing. And if it finds out that you're having one of these regular ones, one that's a life-threatening one, it tries to get you out of it peacefully. Yeah. Uh, it has a few ways of doing it without shocking you. Yeah. And uh, it tries for about three times usually. And then if it cannot do it, it goes nuts to that. I'm just shocking this guy or this woman. And, uh, and then gets you back to a normal rhythm. So you're just walking around and all of a sudden... Yep. Wow. And then people will say, hey, I think my defibrillator <laughs> went off. And I'll yeah. say, nope, if you think your defibrillator you, went it off, didn't. it definitely didn't. Because, you know, for yeah. people who are old enough. What would happen? Oh, like, you feel you like you got kicked by a horse. Okay, yeah. interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it can be confusing if you work on a farm. <laughs> exactly. That's right. yeah. um, and so other reasons for pacemakers, like a slow heart rate, yeah, brady, slow bradycardia. Exactly. So it, so that's pacemakers, but not defibrillators. Right. So pacemakers we implant. So we happen to do a Holter monitor, and lo and behold, you know your heart just didn't beat for 10 seconds. Right. Um, you're a little bit older. You might have had a history of being really lightheaded or maybe you passed out. And then we find that there's there's no heartbeat for 10 seconds. You need a pacemaker. And so it will get implanted. Same thing. It'll watch every heartbeat. And it's like, oh, I don't see a heartbeat for a second or two. And it'll give you a heartbeat quietly. And you, nice. you never know that those are working. They just you know, function in the background. Nice. So, so kind of the take home message, if you're having a regular heartbeat, Maybe talk to your doctor about it. They'll help decide with a combination of factors whether or not it needs to be investigated or not and then potentially treated. Unfortunately, yeah. the majority of the time it's something benign. Yep. And when it's not, there are good treatments for that irregular heartbeat. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Hey, there you go. You know all about irregular heartbeats now. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health.